Now, just as a way of introduction, any number you know, any number you've ever heard of, is either a prime number or a composite number. So a number is either a prime number or it is made up of prime numbers. So because they're made up of prime numbers, they're called composite numbers. And so it's either prime or made up of primes. There is no number that does not contain prime numbers. So it is either a prime number in itself or it is made up of some prime numbers multiplied together to get the number. So let's just um, have that at the back of our minds as we get into this video. I'm going to start with a brief definition of prime numbers, just the kind of definition that you've heard before. Typically, a prime number can only be divided by itself and one, okay? So it has two factors. That's important. It has two factors, and the factors are the number itself and one, which divides. One divides every number, and then the number itself. So um, the smallest prime number we know is the number two, okay? Because the number two has only two factors, which are one and two. Those are the two numbers that will divide two. Um, the next number will be three, and the next number will be um, five, and the next number will be seven and nine. I'm just gonna make a list of the first few prime numbers from um, between zero and 20 so that we can refer to them when we get to composite numbers. So after nine, you have, oh, sorry, did I add nine? That's just, sorry. So that's gonna be 11, 13, 17, and 19. So I was thinking of 19 because I said 20. Okay, so basically these are the numbers, the first, um, the smallest prime numbers you have from zero to 20 because no other number can divide them except themselves and one. So the factors for three, just similarly will be one and three, here will be one and five, here will be one and seven, all the way to 19, okay? So, now, any other number that we deal with can be divided by uh, maybe one or two or three more numbers apart from the ones that we've written. So, for example, let's pick the numbers that we skipped. I skipped four here. So four is a composite number, okay? So if I write four here, um, what numbers will divide four? Uh, we know that um, four can be divided by one, can be divided by two, can also be divided by four. Now that we have more than, you see we had only two factors here, which is the definition of prime numbers, okay? Two factors, itself and one. For composite numbers, it will have more than two factors. That's the best way for you to see composite numbers. It will have more than two factors, and it will be one, the number itself, and another number, or some other numbers that are capable of dividing it. Let's take another example. We go to this, the space here. This is going to be um, six. If you write six, the factors of six are one, two, three, six. You see, six has four factors because all these four numbers can divide this okay so the focus of this um, video is to show you what prime factors are because if you look at the factors of four okay um, this is a prime number this is not a prime number this is not a prime number but the focus of this class is so that we can write every composite number just only in terms of prime numbers, okay? So we want to be able to write four only in terms of prime numbers. We want to be able to write six only in terms of prime numbers. Right now I just made a list of the factors, not minding whether they are prime numbers or not prime numbers, okay? But at the end of this video, you will be able to um, write any composite number only in terms of prime numbers, and that's what you call prime factorization. It's an important skill you need to know or have because at any level of math you might need to go back to this and bring it back. This is something you learn in sixth grade or fifth grade or seventh grade, okay, depending on what, where you live in the world, okay? But you want to be able to do this. You, you use this in calculus. You use this in approximation. Okay, you use this in many methods, many things you do in higher mathematics. So you want to master this and think like a mathematician. Okay, so um, let's just take one more example. Let me take uh, 
18, for example, okay, 18 will be here. Um, the number 18 can be divided by the following numbers. We we'll write 1, 2, 3, uh, 6, 9, 18. You see, 18 has many more factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors, okay. Now, of all these factors, how many of them are prime numbers? How many of these numbers can you find here? Um, that would be 2 and 3. So, if you want to write 18 in terms of its prime factors, you will only use the numbers 2 and 3. Okay? If you want to write 6 only in terms of its prime factors, you only use the numbers 2 and 3. If you want to write 4 as um, in terms of its prime factors, you will only write 2. You can't write any of these other numbers that we have around them. So how do you write a composite number in terms of its prime factors? So I have 18 on the board. We want to write it in terms of only its prime factors. This is a fast method. It's clear and you can always use it for any numbers. And that's the purpose of this video. So what I want you to do is write the number 18 and give it two branches under like that. Okay? Now look for the smallest prime number you know will divide 18. Remember, you should have an idea of all prime numbers starting from 2, 3, then you go to 5, 7, then you go to 11, then 13, and 17, then 19. Now, you want to start from the smallest one. It's important to start from the smallest prime number that will divide 18. And we know 2 is a good candidate there. So we write 2, we multiply it by, if you divide 18 by 2, you get 9. So this is 2 times 9. Write it this way, because this is a prime number, put a circle around it. Okay? So we're done. Don't do anything to 2 anymore because it's a prime um, number and we're looking for the prime factors. So you go to this 9. You know 9 is not a prime number, but 9 can be broken down into two uh, parts. Okay, use the next number. 2 wouldn't work, so you go to the next higher number. Will 3 work for 9? Yes. So what you do is you put another branch under 9. This part will be 3. It's a prime number. Put a circle around it. And 9 will be 3 times 3. You write 3 here also. Both of them are prime numbers. Well, looks like every number right now has a circle around them. At this point, we're done with our work. Okay? So you can go back up here and say 18 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3. You can write it this way. 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. Okay? The shorthand version of this, which we call the... Um, exponent form is to say this is the same thing as 2 multiplied by 3 to the second, okay, because you have 3 twice, and then you just put a small 2 there, which is the exponent, which simply means you have to multiply 3 by itself twice, the way we wrote it, the first point here, um, um, at the top here, okay, basically that's what you do, so writing 18 in terms of its prime factors will be either this way or this way. The reason why this method is good is that it saves space and sometimes that's the only way you can use it because you might need to flip this to the back when you get to um, logarithmic functions or calculus or something. Okay, so this is important that we master. Let's take two more examples. What is the prime factorization of 60? Let's apply the same rules. 60. I'm going to write 60 as 2 multiplied by 30, okay? I put a circle here, and then I break 30 down again. That is 2 multiplied by 15. Uh, please don't do 6 because you don't want to use numbers that are not prime numbers. Remember, have at the back of your mind that the prime numbers we're using just start from 2, 3, 5, 7, um, 11, 13, 17, 19. Now, as you practice your math more and more, you'll, you'll be able to pick out all the prime numbers from 0 to 100. Okay, that's something you should learn to know. Okay, it's amazing what happens from 90 to 100. I try to find prime numbers. I think you should do that exercise. Look for any number from 90 to 100 that is a prime number and see if you'll find any. If you find it, please leave it in the comments and let me know. Thank you. So, at this point, you circle this, 
15 will break down. We cannot move on to 3, and this would be 3 times 5. At this point, all these numbers are now prime numbers. So I can write 60 actually as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Remember, only the circled numbers are the factors, and you're only circling them because you know they are prime numbers. Once they show up, you stop. If they're not prime numbers, you keep putting branches under them and writing them in terms of prime numbers. So at this point, this will be 2 multiplied by 2 times 3 times 5, which we can rewrite as uh, 2. There are two of them, so I put a small 2 here, which is the exponent, uh, times 3 times 5. So this is the prime factorization of 60. Let's see what we can do with 945. I want you to look at this list. This is where um, you may not be so sure of which of these numbers will divide 945. So you might want to just start from what you know. That's why I chose this example. Sometimes you don't know if 3 is going to divide it because you don't know the laws of divisibility and you're stuck. Don't worry, just start with what you can see, obviously. It is obvious that when a number ends in 5 or in 0, um, it's divisible by 5. So you, you can start like that. Let's just try it, okay? I know it's divisible by 3. I know it's divisible by 9, but I don't want to do that. Let's assume you didn't know. So let's do this. We're going to divide this into 5 multiplied by what will... So 5 and 9 is going to be 1. And we're left with 4. 5 and 44 is supposed to be 8. And, and 5 and 45 is supposed to be 9. Ah, interesting. 189. Ah. So this is a prime number. How do we break this down again? Can we try 3? It looks like 3 is going to work. It's, it's becoming obvious now because... 3 will divide 18 and 3 will divide 9. So let's use 3. Now that we have a number that looks more familiar, although you could have tried 3 at the top here too. So this would be 3 multiplied by, what is 3 in 18 is 6 and 3 in 9 is 3. Ooh, I know that number. This is another prime number. What two numbers will give you 63? I know, I know. Six times, no. Seven times, yes. So it's seven times nine. So you don't have to follow the order since you know 63 is nine times seven. I could easily just write this as seven. Remember, put the prime number first, okay? So you can have order on the left-hand side. Now this is seven times nine. Now I can break down this nine again into two. It gives me three times three. This is a prime number, a prime number. So eventually, we have one, two, three, four, five. So how many threes do we have? One, two, three. So this number can be written as three to the third power because there are three threes and then there's one five and one seven. So 945 is actually three to the third multiplied by five multiplied by seven. Every single number can be written as a product of primes and the name of any number that behaves like that is composite. That's the word to describe it. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me give you one before I go so I see if you actually understood this. So put the answer to this in the comment. 180. What will be the prime factors of 180? I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't ever stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.